We all know why Finland joined the Axis as a so-called co-belligerent. Finland was attacked by the USSR in November 1939 and despite not being overrun completely, it had to cede territory to the Soviet Union. After that, Finland became a co-belligerent of the Axis. How did this take place? And how pro-Axis were the Finns to begin with? That and more in this video, keep watching. Good to have you back on the channel if you're new. My name is Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher and I'm hustling history for you. If you find it interesting, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. First of all, an apology. Over a year ago, I held a poll in the community tab asking the viewers which Axis power or co-belligerent you wanted me to cover and Finland won hands down. But ever since, I covered all the others except Finland. This here will be the first video in a series where we're going to explore Finland's role during the Second World War. There's a lot about the Winter War on YouTube, so I'm going to start after the Winter War. Perhaps I'll cover the Winter War someday on location. In this video, we're going to focus on the question how Finland became a co-belligerent. Do notice that the history around this is murky and still debated as of today. But first, some background. In August 1939, Germany and the USSR signed the molotov ribbentrop Pact, a non-aggression pact where also so-called spheres of influence were decided. Among other countries and areas, Finland was for the Soviets to take. When negotiations deadlocked, the Soviets attacked Finland in November 1939. The Winter War had started. Many people know it as a war where the Soviets were very ineffective against the brave Finns who put up stiff resistance. And however this is true, the Soviets did in theory won the Winter War. With the Moscow Peace Treaty March 1940, Finland had to cede areas to the USSR. Finnish flags appeared at half-mast after the publication of the Winter War peace terms. On the flip side, if the Finnish defenses would have collapsed from the get-go, the entire country perhaps may have become part of the USSR. And as it turned out, the Soviets would not leave the Finns alone. After the Winter War, Moscow still wanted to attach Finland to its buffer zone. Germany was not indifferent towards Finland's fate during the Winter War. However, the terms between them and the USSR forbade them providing assistance to the Finns. Yet, German strategy changed when it turned out that the Allies France and Britain were planning a military expedition to the north of Scandinavia. Germany was depending on iron ore from the Swedes for its war industry. Therefore, Hitler launched the invasions of Denmark and Norway in April 1940. The first German reapproachment to Finland came before the end of the Winter War. In February 1940, Hermann Göring sent a confidential message to Finland urging the country to make peace, hinting that all lost territories would be returned once the European war was over. The peace treaty came the following month. To what extent Göring's message attributed to the readiness of the Finns accepting the terms of Moscow, concluding the Winter War is contested. In March 1940, a new Finnish foreign minister was appointed, the pro-German Olaf Witting. Many among the Finnish government were pro-British, but as it turned out, the Finns had to fend for themselves during the Winter War, and this left many disappointed. There was a plan to create a Nordic Defense League together with Denmark and Norway, but this was in violation with the peace treaty with the Soviets. Also, Denmark and Norway were eventually taken over by the Germans from April 1940. In July 1940, Stalin completed the annexation of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania and intensified its demands to Finland for the concession covering the Finnish nickel mines in the north of the country. The Germans also had their eyes on them. Another way of pressuring the Finns was by delaying the trade agreement the Soviets had signed with the Finns that summer. Meanwhile, the Finns also signed trade agreements with Germany, which increased Finnish imports from Germany. The Germans did make clear they did not want to forsake their non-aggression relation with the USSR. And in July, they retreated 
from their demands for nickel from the Pashenga mines in the north. But do notice that by now the Germans had taken over the whole of Norway and were basically stationed very close to these mines. This move was largely tactical. Mid-August, the German official Dr. Ludwig Weissauer carried out a secret investigation of the Finnish defensive capacities and had talked with Finnish Prime Minister Risto Ruti and Commander-in-Chief Karl Gustav Mannerheim. The Finnish leader's message to Hitler was decisive. If Finland was once again left to fight alone against the Soviet Union, it could not survive longer than three months. Even if this estimate was pessimistic, it underlined two crucial points. The Finns wouldn't in no circumstances capitulate to the Soviet Union and so German support for Finland would not be in vain. When Hitler read the report, he decided to support Finland by allowing it to secretly buy German weapons. In exchange, he asked German troops to be allowed to cross Finnish territory. The request was granted by the Finnish government. On their turn, the Soviets were allowed to pass through Finland to reach Hanko. In the Moscow Peace Treaty, Hanko was leased to the Soviet Union as a naval base. As plans for German invasion of the USSR developed, Finland got a more active role in this. This had to do with the fact that Leningrad became a prime target and Leningrad was located fairly close to the Finnish-Soviet border. Mid-December, the Finnish leadership got substantial knowledge about the German plans. Mannerheim's emissary met in Berlin with Hermann Göring and General Franz Halder and he had two requests. A Finno-Swedish defensive alliance and joint general staff planning for war. The first request was denied, the second accepted. When the first German troops crossed Finland in September 1940, it caused a relief among the Finns who had now the feeling they would stand a chance if another Soviet invasion would take place. The Finno-German trade increased and the Finnish army got rearmed with German weapons. Although there existed a skeptical attitude towards Nazi Germany before the war, this has now transformed. Many people in the Nordic countries admired the German attitude and the Hitler regime was excused as being a necessary reaction. As Ruti said, whatever opinion you might have about the current system in Germany, it is a thousand times better than to be under Soviet rule, which would mean our death. Among the Finnish public there was widespread anti-communism and Russophobia. But pro-German attitudes had deeper causes. To understand this, it is crucial to remember that as part of Lutheran Europe, the Nordic countries represented a cultural periphery of the German-speaking world. And until the Second World War had even employed German as their lingua franca. This bond had taken on new forms following German unification in 1871 as Germany developed into a leading industrial state with the Nordic realm as one of its important markets. During World War I, over 2,000 Finns had joined the German army, the so-called Jäger soldiers. They also played a role during the Finnish war against the Reds where the Whites won, also with help of German forces who secured Helsinki. Mannerheim and Ruti they basically hoped for a similar situation during the First World War, where, in a nutshell, Germany would defeat Russia, now the USSR, and the Western powers would defeat Germany, and then Finland could reclaim its territory. Many Finns were not pro-fascist or pro-Nazi, although there existed a Finnish fascist party, the Patriotic People's Movement, but this had only limited electoral success. The Finno-German military alliance began to take shape in the spring of 1941. Around 1,400 Finns were recruited in the German SS. Around 400 of them would fight in the Viking division. More on that in the future. On the 10th of June 1941, the Finnish army mobilized. The main preparations for war had been made. According to Ruti, the Finnish army mobilized because of the increasing threat of a German-Soviet war. Finnish social democrats and liberals, they expressed their doubts whether this decision had been made according to the Finnish constitution. And do notice that Finland at that time was a functioning democracy. Some politicians were against it. A senior parliamentarian, Wayne Voyonma, claimed how people were blinded with war fanaticism. He stated, with a few slogans, 
false claims and limp arguments and above all by titillating patriotic passions the crowd is driven like cattle into all kinds of insanity. Many though were in favor of war, they saw it as the only way to secure Finnish independence. As historian Henrik Lunde wrote, while the decision to become a co-belligerent with Germany may have been made by a group of influential political and military leaders, it is safe to conclude that the decisions taken were in tune with the majority of the politicians and the Finnish population. Finland has an interesting history regarding the Second World War. Are there any specific topics regarding this history you want me to cover? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you want to share some additional information of your or you think I left something out, also leave a comment and I will get back at you. Thanks to my patrons. You see their names on the screen right now. And a special thanks to Thomas Zabiega, Liam Davlin, Damien Wallace, Connor, Philip Jordan, Jakob Muslin, Nick Terranova, Haley, Mark Little Hill, Janis Dojankiewicz, Joan, Justin Tabell, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, Andrea Martic, Susanna Di Bella, John Beach, Wayback History, Luis Pichera, Fernando Lopez Ojeda, and Mike West. So consider becoming a patron so I can make better, cooler, and more awesome content for you. If you'd like to learn more about Finland during World War II. Um, I actually have an older video which I recorded on location in Helsinki on a war cemetery. So if you're interested, click right here. And if you want to learn about units that fought on the side of the Germans during World War II, you can click right here. Well, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you later.